It's getting harder and harder to resist the draw of full electric vehicles. Most of them seem to be SUVs these days, but here's a zero emission super mini, the Peugeot E208. It looks snappy, does 211 miles between charges, has no practicality downsides over the combustion engine version, and comes with monthly payment finance you could justify. What's not to like? In the future, all small cars will need to be developed on platforms that can support full electric as well as conventional thermic propulsion. Surprisingly, few currently are, but the Peugeot 208 is an exception. The brand wants you to pick a powertrain for this model, petrol, diesel or electric, in the same way that you'd select a trim option. And it's the battery-powered variant, the E208, that we're going to look at here. It shares all the same engineering that we've already seen in the PSA Group's two other small car battery-powered products, the Vauxhall Corsa E and the DS3 Crossback e tents a pair of designs that share this Peugeot's sophisticated CMP common modular platform. And those same underpinnings allow for a new generation of big car-style camera safety systems. Sounds promising. Let's take a look. Here, as with this model's cousin, the Vauxhall Corsa E, a 50 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery is mated to a 100 kilowatt electric motor, putting out 136 bhp and working through the usual single speed automatic transmission you get with EVs. Sounds interesting? Let's try it. Like all electric vehicles, this one develops all its torque at once. There's 260 newton meters of it, and this car simply hurls itself away from rest. Only takes a couple of seconds to crest 30, and 62 miles an hour is reached in just 8.1 seconds. And that disguises the fact that, also like all EVs, this zero emissions vehicle has, well, how can we put it, a bit of a weight problem. The drivetrain adds over 300 kilos of bulk, that other small battery-powered little hatches manage this issue a little better is evidenced by the fact that the E208's WLTP-rated 211-mile driving range is easily improved on by the latest versions of the Renault Zoe and the BMW i3. Still, all of this does represent a brave new world for forward-thinking super mini buyers who are looking to make the still rather expensive switch into all-electric motoring. Seems like only yesterday, after all, that a fully charged small EV like this one could only manage around half the kind of range that you're getting here. Of course, you certainly won't achieve anything like that kind of operating capability if you get anywhere near this EV's quoted 93 miles an hour top speed, or if you habitually drive your E208 in the sport setting, which would be necessary to release the full 136 bhp power output we just mentioned. The quoted range figure will only be distantly possible if you instead engage a somewhat restrictive eco mode, which drops power output right down to 83 bhp. That's the setting you'll use in an E208 around town, and that's an environment in which it makes a strange polyphonic sound at low speeds to warn unwary pedestrians of its impending approach. Above 18 miles an hour, though, all you can hear is a bit of tyre roar from the eco-moulded Michelin rubber. What about handling? All that extra weight has to affect this car's drive dynamics, doesn't it? Well, to some extent, the answer is yes, but the downsides are things you'll only really notice when you're trying to throw this car about in a manner that a typical owner hardly ever would. Uh, pitch one and a half tons of a small car into a bend, and the resulting confection won't feel very much like a small car. Most of the time, though, the battery's additional bulk is well disguised. Uh, ride quality is actually class leading. It smothers small bumps and speed humps in a way that's pleasingly French. The all-electric E208 is distinguished from what Peugeot calls thermic-powered models by the adoption of body colouring for the front grille and a more unusual dichroic finish for the Lion badge, which appears to change colour depending on your viewing angle. 
Most versions of this model will be ordered in either GT line or top GT spec. These top two variants recognizable by diamond black roof coloring and glossy black wheel arch flares, which streamline the body, making the wheel diameter of the 17 inch wheel rims appear larger. On these premium versions, these rims are adorned with screw in customizable inserts, which not only improve the aerodynamics, but apparently reduce curb weight by 3.6 kilos. At the rear, where there's more dichroic badging, the avant-garde theme continues with exact design and tautly drawn shaping. The 3D tail lamps feature the brand's trademark three-claw signature and they're linked by a black band running the width of the boot lid, emphasizing this second generation 208 model's extra width. Uh, the rear diffuser features a gloss black finish. Let's take a look inside. where there's the usual eye cockpit driving position in a 208 that sees you viewing the instrument binnacle over the upper rim of the tiny steering wheel rather than conventionally through the wheel spokes. On all but the entry level version of this model, you'll find that that concept has been further developed with the addition of this clever 3D instrument binnacle display. This sees critical information like speed and navigation instructions projected in hologram form from the inner roof of the binnacle onto a piece of slanted perspex in the foreground. Other secondary stuff features on a screen set further back and a button to the left of the steering wheel allows you to differently format the hold setup according to your preferences. More media technology sits to your left in the form of the usual center dash touchscreen, normally seven inches in size, but optionally available in 10 inch form. Either way, the monitor includes plenty of functions, too many in fact, because you have to use this display to operate all the climate functions. And that means switching out of whatever you're looking at every time you want to change temperature or fan speed. At least these uh, seven stylized piano style keys below the monitor look rather nice, uh, positioned in front of a row of touch sensitive uh, shortcut buttons just behind. The seats are reasonably comfortable, uh, there's nothing much wrong with the ergonomics, and there's a reasonable amount of cabin storage space too. Uh, there are also plenty of media connectivity points, plus on most models you get a wireless charging mat too, with its own neat lidded compartment. Let's take a look in the rear. Now, when we tested the combustion engine version of this model, we were disappointed by the amount of backseat space on offer. It was a casualty of Peugeot's decision to design just one 208 floor plan, a chassis which uh, needed to allow space for this electric version's placement of its powertrain's battery pack beneath the back seat. In this E208, at least you feel that spatial compromise is in place for good reason. It's certainly more cramped here than the Super Mini Norm, but it'll be fine for the children who will most commonly travel back here. Uh, for some reason, it does feel a fraction more roomy back here than it does in this car's coarser cousin, though that could be down to the glass house's area feel. The curvature of the front seat backs is designed to improve knee room. There's a notably low central transmission tunnel and there's loads of room to poke your feet beneath these front chairs. It seems a bit mean that coat hooks are missing from the grab handles though. and You don't get any kind of interior light back here unless you go for a top spec model. But you do get several things which are lacking in this model's coarser cousin. Uh, nicely presented stitched door cards, uh, seat back pockets, and on most models, unusually for a car in this class, connectivity points. From mid-range allure trim upwards, there are actually two USB points provided, a standard feature lacking on many luxury cars we test. There's no compromise in boot space, which is 311 litres, just like in any other 208. It's quite a usable, squarely sized space with 674 millimetres of length and 1,018 millimetres of width between the wheel arches. There's no seat folding cleverness, uh, stuff like adjustable seat backs for awkwardly shaped loads, or a ski hatch, or a 40-20-40 rear bench split. You would think that super mini designers might be building that stuff in by now. So instead, there's just a straightforward 60-40 rear bench split, uh, which once it's down, reveals 1,106 litres of capacity when you load up to the roof.
Peugeot obviously thinks it's going to sell quite a few E208s. The prediction is 20% of the total model mix because this powertrain is available with every trim level and the top GT spec option is exclusive to it. Even in base active form though, an E208 will set you back around £26,000 and that's after the available £3,000 government plug-in grant towards purchase has been subtracted from the mildly alarming initial asking price. There are four other trim levels, Active Premium, Allure, Allure Premium and GT Line on the way to the top GT variant that will cost you around £30,000. That's what we have here. Most E208 models will be bought on finance, which from launch after grant deduction saw deals starting from around £280 a month with £5,450 up front. Across the range, E208 buyers get the benefit of the My Peugeot app package, which allows you to check data on your car, uh, things like fuel consumption, maintenance or servicing alerts. It can also save the location of the car, uh, remembering where you've parked it. The app's homepage, it gives you essential data like average consumption and your mileage. Plus, uh, you can also use that app to look at your previous maintenance appointments and also to book service visits. The My Peugeot app additionally includes a range of specific services for E208 owners, including remote services and public charging solutions. Onto this car's value proposition, it's significantly more affordable than its identically engineered Vauxhall Corsa E equivalent, which in its least expensive form costs around £2,000 more than a base spec active trimmed E208. A Corsa E in its priciest guise, that costs around £1,000 more than a top E208 GT. Now the other PSA group model sharing this car's drivetrain is a small crossover SUV, the DS3 Crossback e tense which is priced from around £30,000. This Peugeot's closest rival from outside the PSA group is the market-leading Renault Zoe that also sells mainly in the £25,000 to £30,000 bracket, but in RE50 battery form it has a slightly higher driving range. It doesn't look as avant-garde as this E208 though. On the subject of trendier small EVs, well there is the Honda e, that's priced from around £26,000 and the Mazda CX-30 and the Mini Electric priced from around £28,000 but all three of those cars are smaller inside than this Peugeot and they have smaller batteries and that means a much reduced driving range. The Mini is three door only too. There aren't really any other direct all-electric small hatch options. Now you can get battery-powered versions of the Volkswagen Up and the Seat Mi from around £20,000, but they're both smaller city cars. For more family-orientated, battery-powered, compact hatch models like the Kia e Nero, the Hyundai Kona Electric and the Volkswagen ID3, well, think in terms of starting prices at around the £30,000 mark. A BMW i3, that'll cost from around £35,000. If having considered all that, you're minded to look further at this E208, then you should be quite satisfied by the standard spec on offer. Entry-level active spec only gives you the very basics, but if you can stretch at least as far as the mid-range Allure trim level, then you'll get niceties like 16-inch alloy wheels and the 3D iCockpit configurable head-up instrument panel that we've already fully briefed you on in our design and build section. Plus, you'll find the cabin marked out by the addition of part leather effect upholstery, uh, an electrochrome rear view mirror and automatic climate control functionality for the air conditioning. Quite a few prospective E208 buyers will be tempted by the sportier look of GT line trim which offers 17 inch two-tone diamond cut alloy wheels plus diamond black roof finishing. Uh, there's also gloss black wheel arch extensions, gloss black diffuser effect trim for the lower part of the rear bumper, nearer black door mirror caps and dark chrome and checkered trim for the front grille which has gloss black edging. Top GT trim has a cabin embellished with part Alcantara upholstery and it also gets as standard the brand's bigger 10 inch center dash touchscreen. That's a display that comes complete with the excellent connected 3D navigation package. 
What about safety standards across the range? Well, all models get active safety brake autonomous braking plus lane keeping assist with road edge detection, which alerts you if you drift out of your lane and then apply a subtle corrective lock to steer you back to where you ought to be. Uh, there is also driver's attention warning. Now that works at speeds upwards of 40 miles an hour and it monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. There's also traffic sign recognition. Now that will picture speed signs as you pass them and then display them for you on the dash. Uh, buyers also get the brand's Peugeot Connect and SOS system built into the car and that will uh, automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location in the event of an accident. With GT Line variants, the active safety brake setup is upgraded to be able to work at night and to specifically detect cyclists. Plus, you get smart beam assistance, which automatically dips your headlights for you at night. This top E208 GT model builds on this with active blind spot monitoring. Now, that alerts you if you're just about to dangerously pull out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Peugeot's aim was for this EV to have a total ownership cost roughly equivalent to what you'd have to pay to buy and run an automatic version of the petrol model. While it's some way off that at present, its drivetrain claims to be state-of-the-art for a small car, although its WLTP rated range of 211 miles is better than this class by the BMW i3 and by the Renault Zoe. It is worth pointing out though that both those rivals cost more and that a more closely priced zero emission rival, the Mini Electric, can offer a WLTP range of only 144 miles. Bear in mind that as with all EVs, the quoted range figure will drop considerably in winter weather or over long motorway journeys in the case of the E208 to around 150 miles. If you are an E208 owner, you'll need to know that getting anywhere near the quoted range figure will necessitate staying in the powertrain's provided eco mode. Uh, activating its sport setting will reduce your range by around 10%. What about charging your E208? Well, as an EV owner, it goes without saying that you'll need off-street parking and you'll need to get a wall box installed into your garage. At the time of this test in autumn 2020, the cost of that was £856 ex VAT, although £500 of that will be covered by the available government grant. With the wall box in place, a full charge from empty will take seven and a half hours. If your property happens to have a three-phase electricity supply though, and you pay extra to have your E208's standard 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger upgraded to 11 kilowatt spec, then that charging time can be reduced to just five hours. Don't bother with the 11 kilowatt onboard charger upgrade if you haven't got a three-phase power supply at home. Uh, with a normal electricity supply, an E208 with that 11 kilowatt onboard charger would actually take longer to charge. Charging cost-effectively will require proactive use of the charging timer so you can tap into off-peak electricity rates. Uh, you can activate this via either the car's center dash screen or via a special section of the My Peugeot app. The charging timer will also be useful for preconditioning the cabinet of the car before you get into it. This means that you won't have to use valuable battery energy warming or cooling the cabin when you get in. What about charging your E208 when you're out and about though? Well, at the time of this test, the brand was offering buyers a free six-month subscription to the Polar Public Charging Network. That's the UK's largest. Finding public charges of any sort ought to be straightforward. Uh, the TomTom Tom navigation system will show them, or you can get more detail by bringing up the specialist Zap Map website on the centre dash screen via the car's standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring system. With a public 50 kilowatt rapid charger, the replenishment time to charge from 15 to 80 percent is 45 minutes. If you're fortunate enough to find a 100 kilowatt rapid charger, that falls to 30 minutes. If the charger in question is a 22 kilowatt accelerated public charger, then the replenishment time will vary depending on whether you've paid a little extra to get that upgraded 11 kilowatt onboard charger we just mentioned. If you can do that, you can reduce the five hour replenishment time uh, with that kind of charger to three hours and 20 minutes. 
at the other extreme if you happen to be somewhere where you can only charge from a domestic supply using an ordinary three pin plug and the optional three pin plug lead that costs extra with this car then the charging replenishment time would be a yawning 20 hours as an E208 buyer, your dealer will also give you the option to pay a subscription for the so-called Mobility Pass. That will enable you to borrow a conventional petrol or diesel powered car uh, from the brand for those times when you might need to undertake a longer or more complex journey, uh, holiday times for example. You'll need to know about insurance groupings for the E208, it's Group 26E for Active Trim, 27E for Allure Spec or 2080 for GT Line or GT Trim. And finally you'll want to know about warranties and a class where Hyundai offers a standard 5 year warranty and Kia offers 7 year cover, Peugeot, like most of its rivals, persists with the usual 3 year 60,000 mile package which can be extended to 5 years and 100,000 miles at extra cost. A year's free breakdown cover is also provided, along with a six-year anti-corrosion guarantee. On an E208, the battery is covered by a separate eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty to 70% of its charge capacity. So, how successful has Peugeot been with this E208 in terms of what it describes as unboring the future? Well, we think you'll be impressed. Other sector competitors can go further on a single charge, but we think that this model's operating range will, unlike that of segment rivals such as the Honda E and the Mini Electric, be quite sufficient for the average family's needs. There may be a few super mini buyers who don't like the cabin layout, who want something better suited to cornering on their door handles, or who might prefer a premium brand, but we're guessing that they'll be in the minority. Most will recognise that in this car, Peugeot has delivered an EV super mini that you could really bond with. Glug, glug, plug. Bring it on. <laughs>